Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the depth 3D method of using my, rap, uh, my wrapper. So basically depth 3D is a stereo reprojection based on the depth map. Um, I'm going to use Doom 2016 as the game in which I'm going to do the demo. So after you download the wrapper you get a couple of files here. One is the ini file, the OpenGL DLL obviously, and the stereo shaders. I'm going to copy all of them here next to the game executable. So, in order to be able to interact and configure the wrapper, what first thing we need to do is open the ini file outside the game and make sure that enable dev mode is set to true. This will allow basically to enter into development mode where we can configure the wrapper and uh, use the UI. <coughs> For depth 3D, we, we need to have enabled uh, 3D post effects to true. If this is uh, set to false, the wrapper will use geometry 3D based on shader manipulation. So we set enable post 3D to true. Override depth buffer size. Normally, there is no need for you to do this. However, if, uh, for example, you find a depth buffer that doesn't correspond with the size of your game, you can say true and uh, say, uh, specify the depth buffer width and the height. Uh, depth buffer internal format. This is basically used to um, narrow down or to filter what type of um, format the depth buffer uses or auto and will it will use the first one that it finds flip the image on the y axis now normally you need to do this every single time because um open gel and directx use different uh, coordinate systems which i also explain it here and since uh, I'm basically grabbing OpenGL frames and displaying them in a uh, DirectX context, we need to flip them. However, if for some reason you see that the game is the image is flipped on the y-axis, then you can come here and say false. Depth map linearization method. By default, is set to auto. However, you have a couple of um, values row linear logarithmic inverse row inverse linear inverse logarithmic this basically tells you or how should i say uh, before you can actually use the depth map you need to somehow uh, linearize it to um, be able to extract the data with enough accuracy so you can actually use it in the reprojection by default auto should be fine however later we can modify this one if we um, want a specific uh, mode. Auto and linear are basically the same thing. So auto will try to make the or linearize the depth map using a linear algorithm. <coughs> Specify the depth map target. By default you can have two types of targets for a depth map, either a texture or a render buffer. Auto will try to use the first one that it can find and matches the uh, uh, matches the dimensions of your um, frame buffer but you can override it and say oh I want to ignore textures and I want to use render buffers or the other way around now uh, from my testing I haven't seen a game so far that uses both textures and render buffers for uh, depth map or for depth components but there might be Depth map index. So basically, this is the ID of the <coughs> uh, texture or render buffer that we are going to use. Setting to auto, it will pick up the first one that matches the render buffer and the format and so on. Now, there is because the wrapper is hooked at a later stage, it's not uh, 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 hooking. Um, exactly from the beginning, the game might make resources like textures and render, render buffers before the actual wrapper is present within the game. So technically we could lose a couple of textures or render buffers. 
if this is the case I'm going to show it in Doom basically because if we lose the textures and the um, render buffers that are made before we hook into the game we can still select them later because the game will try to use them but we're, we're, we are going to get there in a second and the default convergence the default convergence is basically the convergence the game will start uh, only in depth 3D we have another default convergence for geometry 3D right so <coughs> now that I've, I've kind of explained what each uh, field does let's give it a go so we copy so we download it we copy everything we already did next to Doom and then we start the game make sure that the game is always set to run as administrator so we start the game and as you can see we see the development version uh, variant of the um, splash screen this will normally take up to 10-15 seconds and then the game will start so the game is still loading now we go inside the game the game is still loading but we notice that the wrapper was loaded and first thing we see we see the famous 2 division green overlay and we see the UI of the wrapper so you are greeted by the welcome screen where you see the build, the version, the authors and it tells you how to interact with the UI so in order to interact with the UI we are actually going to press F10 the moment you press F10 you'll see the menu bar at the top where we have info ah, the game is loading we need to wait a little bit info about and that's the about screen where we uh, all the authors or authors are um, described there and the special thanks and to interact with the UI press F10 key use control plus mouse wheel to change the font size so if I hold control and I use the mouse wheel I can increase the font size or I can decrease the font size of the whole UI so uh, as we can see we are in the game press control T, stereo 2D is deactivated please activate control T default keys we see the overlay and we see this overlay that's part of our wrapper where I list the uh, GPU, I uh, list the GPU usage and the temperature the frame time both in milliseconds per frame and the uh, FPS now this rendering um, or frame time or this calculation is actually done based on what we display <coughs> or what I display if you use another tool like uh, MSI Afterburner or I don't know internal rendering stats because Doom has them you will notice that the game thinks is rendering something but we actually present something else so don't believe any, uh, any other rendering stat except the one here 3 division is enabled, Stereo 2D is activated Control T, Stereo 2D is deactivated I separation that's the actual separation that uh, value that's sh uh, sent to the shaders and that's based on the interocular distance or in case of 2D vision the, um, the monitor size and the depth so it's based on that and the convergence the convergence 0 0.6 0 0.0 uh, 0, uh, 0 0.06 sorry is the one that we specified in the ini file and if we press pause key it will hide this overlay so next as you can see the image is pretty flat so now <coughs> basically uh, as you can see the image is pretty flat which means something while we sti still see it in both eyes that means that the stereo reprojection is not happening and we are going to see why but before that 
once you press F10, you cannot, if you click or press the keys, you cannot interact with the game. You can only interact with the UI. You press F10 again to hide the UI, you can interact back with the game. So I'm going just to load the game. And the game resides on a mechanical hard drive on my laptop. So, yeah, it's a loaded, but normally it takes some time to load. Going to quickly kill these guys. Uh, yeah, 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 go, die, die. Oh my god, come on, die already. And yeah, okay, fine. Oh, come on. Right. Normally, you see, we have uh, 30 FPS, which is what we normally get, the GPU is fully saturated 99%. So we press F10 again, we co don't interact with the game, we interact with the UI. For reference, I'm using my laptop with a <laughs> shitty GPU by today's standards, which is the Mobile 880M, and all the settings are basically set to pff, absolute maximums except motion blur which yeah normally I would disable that one but everything is ultra 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 across the board and I get 30 frames per second in this game right so F10 and we have a couple of menus configuration files here we see the configuration file which is the same INI file and in uh, in the internal um, editor we can edit the file as you can see you can control Z to undo, control Y to redo, you can double click to select entire words, uh, you can control C, control V, you can control X to cut, control V to paste. The only thing that uh, I currently don't have is a f um, find s a function, maybe I'll add it later. So undo everything and yeah, so let's do that save file and you'll get this notification please start the game for the settings take effect only the key settings take effect immediately the key settings basically are these ones the key bindings or the key settings and we are going to talk about them in a second you can close this one we can also see the log so you can move the window you can resize the window you can collapse the window so you have have it as a header and basically this is the um, 3d vision log which is accessible in the working directory of the game most likely next to the game exe which explains or tells you what's going on in the background for example if there is an error or stuff like that this is where you normally look so back to depth 3d we have the stereo 3d menu where we have two options depth editor depth 3d so we open this one <coughs> and we can see that here it says select what depth to view we have textures and render buffers click on render buffers we see nothing happens that means the game is not using render buffers but it's using textures and we have a couple of textures there that the game the, the wrapper found here it's saying using depth texture ID 0. So ID 0 mm, technically means it's not using anything because it couldn't find a match, either because the wrapper started after the resources were created or it couldn't find a match because the resolution doesn't match. So let's start with the beginning. We click on the first one and we actually see the depth map. So that's how normally a depth map looks like. You can see the gun, which is us, and you can see all the geometry there in the background. Here we have <coughs> the depth map linearization method. So we have raw, which is basically how the um, depth map is in memory. We have linear mode, which you can see now you start to see some geometry. Then you have logarithmic, Ooh, now we actually see more geometry. Then we have inverse row, 
where basically everything is black and white. So normally the depth map when you visualize it it needs to be from white to black. Black is close, white is far. If you get it something like that, that this means that you need to inverse it. And I'm going to show you a different game that actually uses an inverse depth map and that's uh, No Man's Sky. So we say okay we like linear, linear looks pretty good, right? So all you have to do is use current depth map. And the moment we click on it we actually see 3D now. F10 and everything is in 3D. It was just a matter of click. Ooh, nice. See? No, I problem I uh, the sync problem, nothing, nothing, nothing. Everything's fine. For most people this is enough. So you just hook it, you just find the depth map, you hit apply. And there it is. For other people this is not enough because if you look closely the gun and the hand is fully flat. So let's try a different view or a different linearization method. We can go with logarithmic and this actually ooh, okay it breaks everything like the hand, the hand is completely broken but we get a nice stratification effect as you can see very nice Let's try raw. Raw is kind kind of is like this. Oh, we get the hand in nice depth, but the world looks pretty flat. So the best compromise would be to use linear mode. Yes, see the arms here are closer than the rock chamber, whatever it is. <coughs> So, next thing, because the game started with an ID 0, which means it couldn't find the texture. So, unless you want to do this every single time we play the game, we can actually make it automatic. So, you go to configuration, config file, we scroll to depth 3D, and depth map linearization. So, we are using linear, so we are going to type in here. We want to always use linear mode depth map type well, we're using textures so it's it's always up it's always uh, texture and depth map index so now let's look at all the other depth textures so we have ID 28 we have ID 4 now 4 and 28 are pretty much the same 4 and 8 are pretty much the same. So we can say here either 28 or 4. Uh, 86 is a different one, different resolution and black. Here we have another one which I don't know it's interesting but not what we are looking for because we actually don't see our game there and 0 which 0 you can't even click it was the default one. So yeah, let's use 4, which is the same one. So now that we say we want to use linear, we want to use the texture 4, we just save it to the file and the next time we restart the game, which I'm going to do, <coughs> we don't, the game will automatically start in um, that 3D. Now this is only needed is if the game uh, or the wrapper doesn't automatically pick the correct depth map. In most games like Soma or uh, other games it will normally find it automatically for you so you don't even need to do this step. But in um, ID5 games this doesn't happen. So we are waiting and as you can see the game starts we have the video there, which obviously the video doesn't have any depth map, so it will be 2D or flat. That's to be expected. And video, video, video.
game is loading and we are inside the game and we already see in 3D now if you look closely you'll see that the separation is quite big and that's because if you look at the depth map it's completely white if I look on logarithmic it's grey so it thinks that everything is on the same depth which is okay because technically everything is on the same depth it's the UI after all so what we can do is well we can add a, um, a key bind that basically modifies the depth when we want to visualize the UI so we can go here to key set settings new depth key 0x70 is basically f1 you can google it and find all the key codes and translate them into hex and what we have we have key code separation convergence x y z w so we say on f1 we want the separation to be 15 percent and we don't want to modify the convergence and we don't want to modify or send any parameters so we say save file and only the key settings will take effect immediately fine we press F1 and we press oh before we do that because we said this is just once actually I wanted to act as a toggle so I can revert back F10 F1 and if, if you look here in the overlay you see depth 15% F1 again back to 100% and you, as you can see only the depth is mo uh, uh, being uh, modified and obviously the eye separation which is normal the convergence is the same so we are going back inside the game <coughs> it loads, we wait ta -ta. F1 again back to maximum separation and now we see everything is in 3D and everything's fine woohoo nice so how about the gun well yeah the gun is too flat the hand is too flat I don't like that so if then again if we go back to depth view we can see we are actually using ID4 right out the bat and we are using linear mode right because yeah logarithmic you can change it right so how about the gun so about the gun we can go to the shader editor and the shader editor here it shows all the shaders that are acting or are used for the uh, stereo reprojection post effect you have the stereo vertex shader you have the stereo pixel shader you have the clip vertex shader and you have the clip pixel shader the blur shaders and the depth view the depth view are basically the shaders from the depth editor and are the shaders responsible for this view on the right unless you actually want to modify to I don't know make them look different or do something else there is no need actually the, o the only shader you kinda need to the clip shaders don't need to modify them unless you are actually dealing with uh, dynamic clip planes the blur, blur shaders again you don't actually need to modify them unless you want to add something special the stereo vertex shader again it's just a pass through nothing really to do here unless you want to but the stereo pixel shader which is the one that opens by default is the one where all the magic happens uh, for the record all the shaders were initially written by SGS rules for uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild I took them, I cleaned them, I modified them, I added a couple of things and I reworked a little bit the sh uh, stereo pixel shader and I added a lot of functions like the the, all the functions to deal with the linearization of the depth map and so on 
So in the stereo pixel shader what we want is the stereo pass is the one that actually does the stereo and this one is based on the Crytek single pass stereo code. And this one calls get depth all over the place. So the actual way to modify how we interpret or the way the, the place where we are um, interpreting the depth from the depth buffer is in get depth function. And as you can see, here are the linear linearization modes that we are sending from the UI. So if you want to deal with the gun, I actually added a couple of code here that allows you to separate the hand from the background. So if I'm going to comment this code, this is GLSL. GLSL is like HLSL. It's basically kind of like C. So we do this, we remove the comments and I just going gonna hit save and recompile shader. Pow! As you can see instantly we have the hand pushed a little bit into depth without modifying the overall depth of the game or the scene. So what does this code actually do? Well, we take the depth, which is the raw depth, we take the logarithmic depth and we take the linear depth. And then we say the logarithmic depth, in order to visualize it, we can go back to the depth editor. The logarithmic depth is this one, which has better um, granularity. If the logarithmic depth is smaller than the near clip. Now the near clip is defined all the way to the top and I define it as 0 0.01. This, the near clip and the far clip normally you don't need to change them but however in different games you do need to change them. So you need to play with these values and find out what the game thinks is the near clip or uses as the near clip and the far clip. But we say that if the logarithmic depth is smaller than the near clip and our depth, which is the raw depth, this one, is smaller than 0 0.5, a value found on trial and error, then the depth we return is actually the raw depth modified by uh, the hand depth factor. The hand depth factor is currently 1. So we just return the raw depth. <coughs> Otherwise, we return the linear depth. And why do we do this? Now, if I undo all this code, if you remember, when we use linear depth, it looks like this, right? Like this. However, if I go back and select raw mode, oh, we actually get some depth to the gun, to the hand and the gun, as you can see. It looks pretty good, but we lose all the precision in the world. So, how about we use the linear depth everywhere else, except for the hand? And basically, that's exactly what this code does. See? That's exactly what this code does. You save the, the shader and recompile and that's it. And now menu. Uh, F1. Everything's fine. Everything looks good. So the final step, you're happy with the game. You say you see wow it's looking nice. The last step, either you can edit the ini file from within the game or you can go outside the game and you say enable dev mod false. You find a nice image uh, on the internet and you save it as logo.bmp which is this one and you paste it next to the game and we start the game again and now the splash screen is actually the one from your logo.bmp file. And now all you have to do is enjoy the game and I'm going to show it again. <coughs> this time it will not run in development mode, this time it will actually run in, let's call it release mode. And the game loads.
you see will, you will not be uh, greeted by the welcome screen instead you will only have the overlay there which you can always disable by pressing the pause key if you find it too intrusive or you don't want to see your GPE usage or your temperature or what separation and convergence, convergence you are currently using so you can always hide it And we're in the menu, we, we press F1, we put the F1 menu layout, we go to campaign, we go to continue game, wait for the game to load. Of course you can also hide the um, Nvidia overlay. I remember the right combination. <laughs> the game is loading. Takes some time to load, as you can see. actually killing my hard drive in the process as you can see the GP is not doing anything Come on, 95, 96 percent, 95. Right. Press F1 again, go to maximum depth. Kill these guys. Where's the other one? There. Pow, pow, pow. And as you can see, everything is okie dokie. No I sync problems because everything is rendered two times. We go here. We watch the cutscene. And this is running at 30 frames. 34, 33, 30 something frames per second on a very, well, pretty old GPU now by today's standards. The 880M is actually lower than a 780 desktop GPU. Grab this one, can press F1 to look at the nice cutscene video. Top, F1 again. You might, right off the bat, you will notice notice some uh, distortion or um, banding. The banding is basically hiding the position in Stereo 3D, the position where the geometry is not rendered. Uh, in reprojection, because you use one camera to render the geometry, uh, when you try to render it from a different view, because you don't have the geometry rendered, which is simply not there, you need to do something. Either you copy part of the image or you try to hide it. Now NVIDIA uses the blur met method. Crytek, sorry, and us, we don't use this one. We use that banding effect. The banding effect can actually be uh, modified in the blur shaders and how many samples you're using and so on. I tweaked it as much as I can uh, and as I could to get to this point where I think it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, unless you actually look, 
and you focus on the banding you can actually see there that that's the banding but if you don't look at the bang banding and you don't focus it after you play a little bit you 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 will not even realize it's there so again this is something that not everyone would like but from my point of view i think just doing or <laughs> getting perfect stereo in just one to three clicks in every game it's right down amazing uh, Yeah, let's grab this one. Tum -tum. Tum -tum 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 -tum. I disabled the sound, unfortunately. Otherwise, I couldn't hear myself, and you would not be able to hear me. So. Yes, hello, my friend. Boom. Bow. So, as you can see, everything is looking. Ah, oh, you had to hit the freaking barrel didn't you everything is pretty awesome no problem with the video with eye synchronization no need to have the beefiest GPUs in the world to run in um, geometry 3d two times or render the scene two times no need to deal with shaders and stuff like that and the depth and the stereo 3D is almost as good as um, geometry 3D, minor the banding and the transparency. So depth 3D always has problems with transparency. It doesn't like transparent objects. It doesn't know how to handle them because technically if you look in the depth map, there is no depth information there. And it doesn't know how to do transparency. So these are the two lim limitations basically. Otherwise everything's awesome the fact that i can run gay uh, doom on <laughs> ultra on uh, an 880 in 3d with in 2019 on a five years old laptop it, it is an alien but still it's pretty darn amazing so with this in mind thank you guys very much i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you are going to use this wrapper and the depth 3d mode to experiment and try different other games emulators and stuff like that as always if you have a um, question always drop a pm or ask me on the nvidia forums thank you again cheers <laughs>